All right, folks, so in this video, we're going to present some new information. Uh, this is from chapter 6.6, 6.7, and this is going to be a new kind of, new kind of confidence interval uh, that describes the difference in two population means. So we've seen a confidence interval to estimate a single population mean, but now what we're going to do is use a confidence interval as a comparison, as a tool to make a comparison between two population means. So in a confidence interval, we have the general structure. So I'm going to rewrite what that structure looks like. Uh, we saw this in the previous video, but it starts off with a point estimate. And then we add and subtract a margin of error. That margin of error is composed of usually a t critical value, and then that's multiplied by the standard error for the situation. So that gets you a lower and upper bound. Now that same general structure is going to apply here, except this is not for a single population mean, but for a difference in two population means. Confidence intervals are based off of sample data. So this point estimate is going to be, well, if it was just one population mean, it would just be y bar. But we are taking the difference, subtraction, between two sample means. And that's our point estimate for the difference in population means. We're using the sample means as an estimate for that. So I'm going to put parentheses around that. It's not entirely necessary, but I think it makes it kind of nice. Our margin of error here is going to have the same structure. So instead of writing t critical, I'm going to be a little bit more descriptive here. So here we need a value from the t distribution with a particular degrees of freedom and a particular area in the upper tail. That is the significance chopped in half here. Now the standard error, if this was for one population mean, a confidence interval just for one mean, it would just be s over square root of n. Now bear with me here. I'm going to write something a little different. If this was just for one population mean, doesn't that just say s over square root of n? So that would be for one population mean, but we need to integrate a second population mean. So I'm going to extend my square root symbol out just a little bit more. And we're going to add another s squared over n, but now that's going to be for a second set of sample statistics. So this is going to get you a lower and upper bound for a confidence interval for a difference in two population means. I think this is worth putting in a box. I love putting things in boxes. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, hey, isn't degrees of freedom n minus 1? But if you have two samples, they potentially could have two different sample sizes. So which one do you use? Well, let's investigate that for a minute. There are different uh, fields of thought on this, but we're going to go with the simple method. Let's see what to use for degrees of freedom. So one approach I'm going to call the simple approach would be to use the two sample sizes added up and subtract by two. That is one way to do that. And that's not too difficult to perform. 
Another simple way that we can get this done is use the smaller of the two. So by what I mean by smaller of the two, because degrees of freedom is n minus one, um, but there's two potential sample sizes here. So we're gonna look at the n minus one for the first sample, n minus one for the second sample, and just use the smaller of the two. Now the last option here is not so simple. Now this is the most appropriate and most correct way to do this, um, but let's just take a look at it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and write it all out here and then fast forward the video. Okay, so here is the not as simple approach to computing the degrees of freedom. This is actually the most accurate method. Um, so maybe I'll make a note of that. Uh, this one is most accurate. And of course it is kind of the most obnoxious to perform. Now these two are not entirely accurate, but uh, they are easy to do, and for the purposes of our course, I think either one is fine, um, but for the most part, uh, we're probably going to stick with this second simple one here. The, these can be considered um, liberal or conservative estimates. Conservative estimates of the degrees of freedom. And that's something that we'll kind of dive into in the future, but we don't need to think about it too much right now. This not so simple method has a name, of course. This is called the Welch Satterthwaite. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Satterthwaite method. And I'm not going to make you calculate this. That's kind of a lot of work. It's just addition and raising to the power of two or four, but it's, it is kind of intense. So I'm going to mostly indicate which one to use. We'll often just use the smaller of the two. That is the conservative approach there. So for this video, I just wanted to highlight the formula that we're going to use and what degrees of freedom we're going to use in this formula. So this is a confidence interval for the difference in two means. And in the next video, we will look at a particular example.